We're now reaching the point where my responsibilities for the landscape in Project Pegasus reached an end. The last thing we're going to look at adding is a final level of fidelity and extra visual flourish via the addition of landscape grass, ground cover that's going to sit very close and carpet the terrain in a rich layer of luscious detail. To turn this on, I simply need to go to the landscape material, the details panel, and I'm going to search for grass. And I'm going to go ahead and toggle this on. Now I'm going to switch back to the layers panel and I'm going to go to layer one, that is just uh, our kind of lowland grass, if you remember the setup in Houdini. I'm going to switch to grass type zero. By default, the grass is off, minus one. So I'm just going to minimize this window here since it's not very relevant to what we're looking at. And we can see now that we've got a nice layer of grass sort of carpeting the landscape that streams in and out as you zoom in and out from the terrain. So that's a nice rich layer of fidelity there. If I go to uh, grass type one, we can see that we're gonna get a different result, a more kind of low lying uh, mossy ground cover. And grass type two is a rich plain or a rich field full of wildflowers. How many of these last grass types do we have and how can we see what's populated inside of them? Well. We need to go to the materials, landscape, grass type, grass types directory, and we'll see we've got those four grass types listed there. We've got grass, heather, highland, and wetland. And if we pop all of these open, we can see that we've got inside of the grass type grass, two types of grass patch. So we can navigate to where these are in the content directory here, inside of a con content folder called ground cover. And there's one that's particularly interesting to me here, and it's this one called Coluna vulgaris, which is the Latin name for heather. So if we have a quick little look at the grass types, we can indeed see that we have one called heather. But when we were cycling through those layers, we haven't yet reached it. So I'm just going to go ahead and switch to grass type three. So there you go. You can see that we're now selecting our grass type heather. So this uh, this this numbering here corresponds to one of these uh, one of these layers and. It'd probably be helpful if each of these layers actually had a number associated with them so you could see which index they were. Now, I really like that heathery look, but uh, but right now I think it's a little bit too dense and there's a little bit too much of it. So for the kind of default grass type, I'm gonna go ahead and switch it back to one there. And these like low, low lying planes are just gonna just gonna have some sort of, uh, not, not one, sorry, zero. These low lying planes are just gonna have some sort of thick, luscious, uh, luscious grass there waving in the wind. Now, if we go up further upland, we're going to see we do still get patches of this grass, but they're actually broken up by these kind of uh, more rocky uh, looking uh, patches of dirt, which is our layer. Well, these both are called layer one, weirdly, but that's that's the second layer one. So I think now's a good time to actually go ahead and name these layers. So I'm going to call this grass and I'm going to call this moss. And we're going to jump inside and I'm going to set the grass type here to be grass type one. And now we're going to see that we get that populated with the constant contents of that kind of mossy layer of grass, which is coming from LGT underscore PE Highland. Okay, so now we've got two different kinds of ground cover and uh, it's already sort of helping a lot to make the world feel more alive. You can see as we sort of fly around and have a look at the terrain, it feels a lot more rich and a lot more, a lot more detailed. It's become especially noticeable as we play with the lighting and sort of see see how that adds some nice crisp shadows and detail onto our terrain. There we go. So we've added two two types of grass now, but I did really like those other kinds of grass that we uh, that we were able to check out inside of the uh, the shader there. So I'm just going to play, play around a little bit, and we're going to create some new masks. We're going to create two masks and they're going to take place after the paths and the woodland here. We're going to put down a height field mask by feature like so. And what I want to be really careful about here is I want to ensure that all of this masking uh, doesn't overwrite any of the layers that are important that we've sort of added later in the sequence of operations. It's all right for these layers of new grass to override the old grass, but I certainly don't want them to override the cliffs, the scree, the paths or the woodland. So just like we did before, I'm going to put down another height field visualize. And as always, we're going to set the tinting to be default. 
And again, what we're going to do is put down an object merge, just like we did with the woodland. In fact, yeah, put down an object merge. I'm going to create a new null. I'm going to call this IDB to denote the fact that it comes later after ID map A. Okay, and we're going to do the same exact thing that we did when we were uh, when we were sort of doing the woodland masking inside of there. So we're going to go ahead and put height field ID to layer. Okay, and the layers we want to grab again are simply going to be the two grass layers, which we're going to combine. And the really nice thing about working with this uh, ID based system is that you don't have to worry uh, about sort of new layers that are being added if you're always working from the latest version of the ID map, because these can never occupy the same location, unlike traditional sort of height field masks inside of Houdini. So you always know that it's going to be one or the other. We can see that indeed the little patches of woodland there are showing up as white and so are the roads. Okay, so this is going to serve as the kind of basis of where can our, where can our uh, new grass types go. And the first word I'm going to, going to think about is going to be those little pockets of, uh, of flowers, which were cotton grass. So I'm going to wire the height field mask by feature in. In fact, no, I'm going to go ahead and do a height field layer here. And I'm going to carry the mask from the ID map over onto our actual terrain, which is a bit more height fidelity. And then I'm going to do the height field mask by feature. I'm going to go with a, a multiply. And as with so many things that are plant related, my favorite mask to use is occlusion. Only this time, as always, we're going to bring down the number of searches because we don't need much uh, quality for this, for this kind of mask. And as, as I often do, I'm going to actually tighten this up right to the end here to create a more contrasting mask. Okay, so right now it's still uh, picking out too much of the terrain. So what I'm going to try to do is reduce that view distance down much smaller and we're going to play around with these settings here. Okay, so uh, that's looking pretty nice. I think that's going to give us some interesting variation. And I'm going to do one more thing. I'm going to try and do a mask by curvature, which we haven't yet used. So I'm going to go ahead and hit compute range. I'm going to set this to be linear. And then I'm going to play, play with this slider, see how that can be used to modulate our mask. And this is going to give us, I think, a nice amount of breakup uh, of different grass types across our terrain. So as usual, we're going to add another, another null. I'm going to call this out meadow. And we could try to work this into our terrain texturing. But to tell you the truth, I think the only place I really care about having this right now is in the ID map. So I'm going to put down an object, object merge. I'm going to bring it up after this woodland layer, after the IDB. Remember, the order is really important. And once again, we're going to add another ID layer. And we're going to call this one Meadow. And actually, while we're at it, let's go and add Heath as well. We'll set the Heath to be a light pink kind of color. There we go. And we'll set the Meadow to be some bright green. And then we'll go down and have a look at our IDB, wait for it all to recompute. Then we're going to put down a height field layers to ID, wire, wire in our meadow. And we're going to, ah, we have to of course make sure that we've hooked in the layers to that. So it's better to actually copy and paste one of your existing height field layers to ID, just in case you forget. We're gonna set this one to be meadow. And we're going to set the preview to be the ramp. We also need to set the mask. Yeah, so definitely always better to copy one of your existing layers to ID. And that's looking pretty nice now. We're getting some of these breakup regions. And then I'm going to pop back over to this uh, to this work we were doing. And I'm just going to go ahead and collapse this to a subnetwork, just like we did with the woodland and the paths. And now we're going to think about how we can do the heather masking. It's pretty much just a copy. <laughs> of this whole network. There we go. I can tidy this up in a minute. Only this time, we're going to do something slightly different with our mask by feature. I'm going to try and think about where we want our heather to be on the terrain. Okay. So 
right now it's sort of going to be everywhere and I would kind of like to get it just on some of these more exposed hills. So I'm going to go back to the Abbey Teclusion. Last time we reduced the view distance because we wanted to create very small scale breakup. This time I'm going to do the opposite. So we want to create large scale regions where we find the heather. And I do kind of think that's actually still quite nice uh, the way we set it up before, to sort of grab the, the intermediate regions. Uh, it looks quite interesting. But in this case, let's pull it more towards the, uh, the more exposed areas and leave just the, the ridges uh, clear of the heather. And the next thing I'm going to do is I don't want this to overpower the grass everywhere on the ter terrain, just more in the kind of upland and highland regions. So I'm going to go ahead and do a quick mask by height. And then, yes, last but not least, the mask by direction. I feel this is, uh, again, much like with the ambient occlusion, it's kind of my go-to uh, when I'm dealing with foliage. So I want to keep stuff directional and we want to... Uh, we want to make it be kind of aware of the sort of peaks and troughs of the terrain. And I feel like that's quite, quite interesting, but it's maybe not covering quite enough of the terrain. So I'm just going to keep sort of playing it, playing around with it until we find ways to cover sort of nice broad patches of the terrain with lovely heather. And I think this is going to work really nicely. Okay. So we'll create a new output for the subnetwork, there we go. And uh, yes, so this out meadow, actually, I want to pull outside of the subnetwork. And this is going to be out heath. So we're going to grab both of these, pull them out. We have our two layers there. OK, we'll make another object merge. Oh, and this reference has been broken because uh, I moved some things around. So. So need to rewire that in to the meadow. And then this second one. Yeah, we're going to drag the, the heath into this object merge for the second one. OK, copy the height field layers to ID once more. And this one is going to get pushed into the heather layer. And now we can see that we've created some nice heather patches on the terrain. It'll be interesting to see how this looks in Unreal. It's always just a first try, so, you know, ripe for iteration. All right, and actually, I think with this out heath mask, we definitely do want to inject some of that into the uh, the color of the terrain. So I'm going to grab another height field tint, sort of the lazier way of working with this height field layer, uh, material system. So we don't, when we don't really care about any texture or uh, displacement, we can just tint it. Uh, and actually, there is another option here too, called uh, height field color, uh, which is slightly different in the way it works. So we can we can try tinting it first, but tinting is always going to lead to some kind of darkening unless you set the tint to actually be brighter than one. So we'll try this first, but we may end up using the color instead. So I'm going to set it to sort of a light pink like that. And that's actually looking quite nice already, I would say. Um, maybe pull it a little bit more towards the red and lighten it up. And then, as I said, we do actually need to brighten that to get it to be able to brighten it. So we're not going to use a height field tint here. We're going to try and use the height field color instead, which is going to allow us to overpower the color uh, more directly with the color that we want. Okay, and then of course, I'm gonna pull down the LERP value to try and bring it in a little bit less intensely. Okay, and I'm really liking the way that's looking. So uh, I'm gonna go ahead and save out the, the color as per usual, there it is. And then we're gonna go to the ID map. I'm going to save that to disk two. I'm going to go back to Unreal. I'm going to navigate to our textures folder. I'm going to zoom out, have a little macro view of the terrain for now. I'm going to re-import both of these textures. Okay, and then we have the same problem that we always have, which is we need to go back to our landscape material instance, go to the details panel. We need to add some more layers. So in this case, we actually added two layers at once. So we're going to increase the number of layers by two go we've got our other layers looking correct again so then lastly we're going to go and add some more layers to this terrain and we're going to configure them sort of correctly so i'll speed this part of the video up okay so these two layers have been correctly configured now 
And uh, I can just go out and close down the, uh, the sort of blend asset tab on both of those layers. We're mainly going to be concerned with the scalar parameter values. But before I do anything else, I'm just going to name this top leather layer Heath and this layer here Meadow. Okay. And uh, we're going to jump inside of the, uh, the Heath layer, the scalar parameter values there. And of course, we can play around with the material selection if we want. So if we were to sort of fly up and uh, have a quick look at some of this, uh, some of this kind of pink region, uh, we could, of course, try to change the material as we did before. But to be honest, I think I'm quite happy with, uh, with just this basic kind of mossy undergrowth look. And uh, then I'm going to go into the grass type and pick three, which is the heather. So I'm just going to wait for that to populate. And uh, this is one I really, really like uh, adding to the landscape. So if we just have a quick little look around, kind of admire our work, uh, maybe somewhere with a bit more heather. Here we go. This side seems to have a, have a little bit more. Where's a big dense region? Here's quite nice. And the thing I really love about this, this layer is how it works with the kind of animal trails and paths that we've put through. And you get these kinds of crisscrossing patterns uh, through, through the heather there, uh, which I just think looks really nice. And it's very interesting to kind of navigate around as a player, uh, sort of having those kind of maze-like uh, appearance almost. Uh, so yeah, we've got the heather in there. And uh, then the last one that we need to set up, so we can just go ahead and minimize down the heather. So we can go into the, the meadow parameters, scalar parameters. And of course, we want to pick the grass type for this one. Uh, so let's just go and have a look at this kind of region over here and see what happens if we put the grass type on two. Wait for that to uh, to respawn back in. And now you can see that in the kind of gullies and, and sort of along all of these kind of boundary and border regions, we're going to get this longer uh, flowery kind of meadow grass uh, that adds some breakup and visual interest uh, to our terrain. And uh, that about does it. Uh, so yeah, we've added grass to our terrain. And uh, that's really it. So um, I'd just like to, uh, to thank you guys for uh, following along with the series if you've made it this far. And um, in, a, in the last video, we're just going to have a quick look at some kind of tweaks we can make that's just going to sort of push this uh, end result just that little bit further. And uh, I strongly encourage you uh, to sort of play around with adding your own grass layers, maybe get some assets from the Quixel library and switch out some of these kind of uh, props that we've, we're using here with ones that you've added yourselves. And you can also use the, uh, the same approach that we used for the woodland to incorporate some sort of scattered rocks uh, on the environment if you, if you, if you choose to. So um, really now I, I just love to see how far people can push this kind of approach. And uh, I'll see you in the next one.